Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the five minute chart of silver. It's actually the silver spot in US dollars. Um, and it's crossed over the silver spot in the great British pound. And uh, the reason I did that is to show you it was uh, this incident here that we're going to be talking about all night tonight. Uh, this silver fix, I'm going to call it warning shot because I think ultimately that's what it was, but we'll explain that in a bit. So you can see here that it was at 7 a.m. This was not the usual, which is a Comex open, um, but it was, uh, it had to do with the London fix. And we covered the silver fix before. Um, it's uh, something everybody had confidence that they were going to uh, fix a broken market with the previous fix that they had, and it's actually more broken now. But uh, the name itself, Silver Fix, should give you a hint as to what it is. It's the banks fixing the price of silver. That's just right in your face. So what does this mean? Well, we're going to explore that. And uh, I just want you to look at the technicals here on this chart to try to ascertain what this means. So you can see that uh, we had initial drop down and the move was from about 14. Uh, well, it's not on the five minute chart because that scrolled off, but it actually went into the 13s. And uh, you can see that the the U.S. silver price did not go down as much as the British silver price, but then again, they rallied later. That's not really important. It's neither here nor there. If we pull out to the long-term chart, uh, you can see that there's a, a pretty big divergence between the uh, British price and the US price, but we've had those in the past. So we want to, uh, don't mind the pop-ups there. I'm, I'm running a proof of stake philosopher stone wallet here so they may pop up but um, so the question is why is there a divergence and does it have anything to do with the silver fix so let's start off with before we get to the silver story I want to talk a little bit about cryptocurrencies now I have a position uh, on Yobit now I actually open an account on Yobit and that's the wrong window so we'll pull another one up here but I opened up a account on Yobit and the reason why is because Yobit actually listed this spots coin that what happened was when Cripsy went under I'm transferring a half a Bitcoin right now so that I can trade both sides of this uh, okay so it looks like it came through but uh, when Cripsy went under, there were a large number of altcoins that were left high and dry because they weren't listed on multiple exchanges. Now, I've shown you before on the World Coin Exchange. I'm sorry, that's my Poloniex account. On the World Coin Exchange, that the number of exchanges that list a coin is really important. Because what happens, for example, that coin that you saw there that popped up that's staking right now, which is Philosopher's Stone, uh, PHS, that was listed solely on Cripsy. So you can see this coin, which I have, I'm staking it, I have about 100,000 of it, but there's no market for it. And uh, since Cripsy shut down, you can see it's just a flat line. So right now there's no market for the coin. Does that mean the coin is worthless? No, I, I think the coin's really neat, to tell you the truth. There's a lot of stuff about this coin I like. I don't have a lot of value in it, but it's just one of the coins that I like for proof of stake. So the question is, how do you trade a coin that's not listed? Well, it's interesting that Yobit had listed the spots, which is a, a coin I have quite a bit of that was uh, cryptocurrency that was going to try to match the spot price of gold and silver and be able to trade gold and silver for cryptocurrency. So it was kind of a unique idea that someone came up with. I thought maybe I'd accumulate some of it. And then lo and behold, somebody went ahead and added this coin to this exchange. 
So you can see if we search for the price here, I'm sorry, if we search for the market here, you can see it's up 114%. Here's the chart. Okay, there's my deposit just came in. And so you can see that just seven days ago, right here, this is when the coin got listed. Now they have this feature that's kind of neat. And this is what you'd expect when you see things competing. So they have given you the ability to add a coin to the exchange. You can see you can make a free request to have the coin trade on the exchange. Or if you want to just make it so, which is kind of neat, you can pay uh, a tenth of a Bitcoin. So you can shell out 20 bucks and get a coin listed as long as it's a, a legitimate cryptocurrency that has a wallet that's functioning. And uh, a lot of the coins we have are. Uh, you can see these are the things you need to add to get it listed, and they'll go ahead and list that coin. I think that is fantastic. So I'm really excited about that, that uh, there's a way to get these coins listed. It, it was, uh, in my mind, it was going to be a, a big tragedy when Cripsy went under, and they went under, and I thought it was going to be a death knell for these markets. But it turned out to be exactly the opposite when uh, we saw, as I covered before, an explosion in the um, volume on, on Poloniex. Now today it's about two and a half million. You can see there's other coins coming, uh, uh, other exchanges coming in here. Now admittedly, uh, this Yobit, which has 136 coins, it's not doing a lot of volume at only $11,000, but give it time, it may end up being there. So. That's the latest on the cryptocurrencies. It, it, it's very exciting and it's changing all the time. Now I wanted to mention that uh, Florin coin that I had a, a number of. That was the one that although Cripsy shut down, uh, it was already listed also on Poloniex and Bittrex. So this is another coin that I have a large amount of coins on and that was because I was uh, betting on this Alexandra project, which hasn't been very fruitful of late. But the idea is to create a uh, encrypted peer-to-peer uh, -peer library that's unassailable and things like torrents can be on there. So this coin was already on two other exchanges. So Cripsy going under really didn't have much effect. So let's get over to the main story and that's going to be this silver fix and uh, what I think is a warning shot by the powers that be. And we'll start off by looking at Jay Snips. Now it's an interesting speculation that he's made. I don't know if I agree with this, that this is the actual explanation, but let's listen to what Jay Snips has to say. I, is it wrong of me to suggest that there may have been an absolute enormous in the trillions of dollars of derivatives contracts, potentially trillions, of derivatives contracts that would have blown up because the price was too high. So they had to force it down to 1358 an ounce where the derivatives would be under control. So in other words, if you're holding a contract and you're betting that the price is gonna be lower, one of these derivatives contracts, and the price actually goes up to 1442, oh crap, we weren't expecting that. Massive margin call, we're in deep trouble. At the, by the end of the day, we're finished, we're done. We're in big trouble. Uh, kitty, Psst, kitty. Jay Snip's doing a video right now. Well, I'll stop it there. I can hear Jennifer talking to a kitty too. So that's the theory. We really don't need much more on that. That's Jay Snip's theory that the reason why they did that was that they had some really important silver futures contracts or derivatives contracts or other contracts that had to settle that explanation really doesn't do much for me. But I just wanted to share that with you. Now this is going to hint at another explanation of what happened. This is an article from Silver Doctors from the 29th. Bullion wholesaler on Thursday, silver fix manipulation. Quote, if you were a seller today, you got blanked. Quote, if you were a buyer today, you were happy, and if you were a seller today, you got blanked. Participants in the silver bullion market witnessed perhaps the most egregiously blatant occurrence of silver manipulation in history Thursday 
when the six large fixing bullion banks rigged the London silver price down 84 cents, 6% from the current spot and futures trading, resulting in the lowest silver price fix since 2009. The dealers blamed Thursday's action on rules decided by the compliance departments of banks and brokerages and aimed at meeting the new regulatory regime, which block traders participating in the benchmark auction from arbitrage in other silver markets at the same time. The head of the trade desk of one of the world's largest bullion wholesalers provided his insight. The key is the highlighted paragraph which prohibits participants, generally large bullion banks and institutions with extremely experienced dealers, from countering the effects of large order imbalances with arbitrage. Regulators which prohibit these participants from arbitraging the imbalances were unable to foresee this as a consequence. Bottom line is that if you were a buyer today, you were happy, and if you were a seller today, you were blanked. John Miles of the Zayner Group brokerage firm summarized what occurred. It was an LBMA fix issue. The silver fix is now called the LBMA silver price. The six banks that set the price are not allowed to lay off risk at COMEX or anywhere else, so when there was a sell order in balance this morning, the banks had to find a price lever level where they would buy that imbalance, and that price level was much lower than the prevailing spot or futures price. So once the LBMA silver price was publicly announced at 6.15 a.m., the futures market immediately received a sell of 5,000 silver futures contracts within a minute or two. Thus, we have a mini silver crash. If you have a minute, check out your silver futures chart. And there you have it, ladies and gents. Six bullion banks dumped over 25 million ounces of paper silver on the market in under 90 seconds in order to set the London silver price 84 cents below the current silver spot. And so that's the article. And uh, it's a picture from TF Metals. So what's really going on here? Well, I think that J Snips is close. There's definitely that derivatives issue going on and I think that Silver Doctors is close as well that there is this dumping that uh, has to be responded to by the uh, six banks that do the silver fix but really I think there's something more here now if you remember when I covered the story of MF Global if you remember the MF Global story was the story where Anne Barnhart, who was a, uh, I think she, uh, the term is futures uh, commodities, uh, I don't remember, not dealer, but uh, uh, meter, greeter, something like that. Uh, but it's a, a person who connects uh, the people that she had as clients were cattle futures people. They were cattle ranchers, and they had to offset their the, the feeder cattle and live cattle prices on the futures market. And what happened was that the customer funds in their futures accounts were basically stolen by John Corzine and MF Global. And if you remember back when that happened at the time, the comment that I made about that was that what I believed was behind that was an attack against the ability to hedge futures and to offset the prices. Now, we know that with cattle futures and with corn futures, those are the futures that the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the Merck, uh, the, the exchanges that were built based on crops. And uh, they started off with the, the corn and the soybeans and the wheat, and, and they were seasonal. Uh, farmers didn't know what kind of uh, crop they were gonna get. They didn't know what they would have by next spring, so they had the ability to hedge their crop. They could forward sell. And so that's what, how the futures exchanges were established. And then they added in these other contracts. And silver and gold were other contracts that they added in. Now, this gave buyers and sellers an ability to hedge. And this is really important because when we're looking at actors like silver doctors, um, we're talking about people who are selling a significant amount of bullion. And 
the way that this works is that if you're a seller of bullion, then when you get delivery of a large amount of product, we know with some of the members who had problems with Gainesville and Provident and others who sold something that they didn't have, in other words, sold something they were expecting to get delivery on, um, they, in some cases, could have to renege. So most people want to do business with a company that actually has the physical inventory in stock. Now, if you have the physical inventory in stock, if you've pre-ordered the inventory, that means you put up a cash price up front to, to bring in this inventory. And the question is, what happens if the price drastically falls for the inventory that you've purchased? Uh, let's, pull out, let's pull up just the silver chart in a very long-term chart, say the weekly chart here. And we'll pull these off here. So what if you're a coin seller who just happened to load up on Silver Eagles right here before this massive decline happened? Well, obviously, if you're not hedged, you're going to take a loss. And if the loss you take, it, you try to balance that out by waiting for the price to come back, you can see the price never came back. A lot of people speculate that's what happened to Tolving. So a lot of the players like Silver Doctors, Gainesville Coins, Atmex, Provident, JM Bullion, all these people, they use the futures market to hedge their silver. Now what if these markets become unreliable? We saw with MF Global where the money was seized. Now I believe that this case of what just happened here is a warning shot. And why would they do that? Well, it's very simple. The reason why they would do that is if they're worried about the physical demand of silver overrunning the supply and the bankers being buried, which is the whole premise of our blog, our website, and our member site, is that silver stackers can bury these people. If they're worried about being buried by physical silver stackers, one of the big things they can do is neutralize the physical silver sellers by preventing them from having an ability to hedge. So that is what I believe happened. That is what this warning shot was. This was a warning shot to the people who are hedged. As Silver Doctor said, those who sell silver, uh, they really got taken to the cleaners. And that's exactly what they want. They want to scare the heck out of people who sell physical silver to the public. That was a warning shot. And we'll talk to you next time.